And I keep asking how I don't know better but now Ooh -ah. That's how I'm syncing the audio from now on, just letting you know. <laughs> hey, so sorry if I sound a bit croaky, I currently have a cold. When I was little, I used to wake up really early and every morning I would run downstairs in my PJs and sit in front of the TV we had in the living room. And on that TV, I would watch superhero cartoons. I would pretty much watch whatever was on, but my favourites were Spider-Man and Wonder Woman. The other day, I went to see the new Wonder Woman movie in the cinema, and watching that film, I almost felt like that little girl again who wanted to be badass and fight all the bad guys and look awesome doing it. But <laughs> older Emma's analytical brain slipped in, and I have some thoughts. <laughs> first off, this is the first female-led superhero movie in recent years, which is pretty awesome in itself. However, because of the bad reviews of previous DC films, I was a little apprehensive going into this movie. What if it was terrible and the white guy Hollywood producers that said that a woman superhero movie would never do well were proven right? <laughs> what if they thought that the reason it had done badly was because it was fronted by and directed by a woman. Which of course would be ridiculous, like so many movies that are led by and directed by men do badly and then they don't blame the entire male gender for that. Luckily I really enjoyed it and it was definitely above average as a superhero movie but as a movie with a female lead it went above and beyond my expectations. I personally loved all the connections to Greek mythology because I was a Percy Jackson kid so anything that has connections to Zeus and the Amazons and all the gods just makes me very happy. I liked how it was love that saved the day and that it was Diana's emotions that gave her the power in the end. Sometimes, in order for a female character to be strong, she is expected to fit all the expectations that are normally attached to masculinity, so she must have no weaknesses, especially not emotional ones. And when female characters do have weaknesses, they tend to be that they are too emotional or too sensitive. For Diana, her emotion and sensitivity led to her heroism, and I thought that was wonderful. I did think that the ending was a tad predictable. Um, I won't go into details here because I want this to be mostly spoiler free, but it was kind of just the typical superhero movie ending. In a way, I don't think that necessarily takes away from the quality of the movie, however, because I don't think that movie tropes have to be bad if they still make you feel things, and I think the ending did make me feel things. I think my favourite parts of the movie were the conversations between Diana and Steve and like their dynamic as a pair. Um, that tends to be the case with me in superhero movies. I like the quiet moments that focus on character development or just fun dialogue rather than the like fight scenes, though I do also enjoy those. There was a particular moment on a boat uh, where I think Diana's bisexuality was hinted at, and even though it could have been more explicit, I'll take what I can get. I also really enjoyed the first part of the movie with the Amazons. I love the Amazons. The actors were diverse in terms of race, obviously they were all female. They were badass and the whole island was vibrant and beautiful and it didn't suffer from the superhero movie thing where everything is grey and dull and gross, though to be fair the rest of the movie did, but I understand why they did that, it was like, for the contrast. Also I quite liked the tinge of corruption interwoven with the perfection, like their forced separation from the rest of the world and how they didn't really want to help mankind. I thought that kind of gave them more depth. They weren't Mary Sue's basically. Obviously there wasn't much diversity in terms of body type because they were all kind of tall and slim, but it wasn't like that was a beauty standard, it was a strength standard. They looked like that and dressed like that because they were born warriors not because a man told them to. One of the Amazons was even played by a world-renowned boxer, which I just discovered, which is really cool. The relationship between Diana and Steve was one that I quite enjoyed. I mean, the first thing she does is save his life, which already flips traditional gender roles on his head. One possible criticism is that Steve spends a lot of the movie trying to explain the world to Diana, and sometimes he's wrong, and sometimes he's right. Too often in fiction, even the strongest, smartest female characters have to have the world explained to them by a man. But in my opinion, this movie is different because even though Steve does try to tell Diana what to do, he is proven completely wrong in a quite tragic, pivotal scene later in the film. And she calls him out for it too, it's not at all brushed over. Also, not that I counted, but I'm pretty sure this film passes the Bechdel test within like the first act 
of the movie, though the rest of the movie is a little rustier in this area. My main issue was that even in a female-led movie about a woman who grew up surrounded exclusively by women, her team in the end was still made up of all men and one woman. They definitely did have some diversity in there in terms of race and culture, background and ability, and they didn't shy away from pointing that out. With one of the guys even saying that he wanted to be an actor, but he couldn't because of the colour of his skin. That's a pretty hefty statement in a movie made by DC, which mostly casts white actors. But this film was different, and I did appreciate that. I just would have appreciated an actual normal human woman who had useful skills. Because I loved the secretary, I loved Etta Candy, but let's be real, she was pure comic relief. You can say that in that time period, women weren't allowed to go to war, but this was an unofficial mission. And when Steve was looking for those who weren't already serving to help them, why wouldn't he find a woman with special skills? Women did actually have skills back then, even if they weren't allowed to use them. But again, I'll take what I can get. Having Diana in an all-male environment certainly put her out of her comfort zone, and that was interesting, but I would have loved to see the dynamic between her and a competent human woman who could, like, explain sexism to her in the same way that Samir, the would-be actor, explained racism to her. This would have added to her discovery that mankind isn't inherently perfect and good without the influence of Ares. Patty Jenkins, the director, said that the film had no deleted scenes and called it steady, and I think I definitely agree with that. It was a secure, self-contained story that wasn't corrupted at all by the rest of the cinematic universe. This was actually the first DC film I've ever seen, and it didn't matter. I enjoyed it just as much. It reminded me of Captain America the First Avenger, in a way, but it also felt like it had so much more gravity to it. I don't know if it was how it was shot, the plot, or just because it was, hopefully, a pioneer for future female-led superhero movies to come. I would happily watch A Wonder Woman 2, and I think this might be one of those movies that I actually buy on DVD. I know. I'm so old-fashioned, but I just enjoyed it that much. Little Emma would have adored this movie, and current Emma enjoys it too. And she also needs to stop talking about herself in third person now. I'll take what I can get, and what I got was pretty darn good. Um, I'll see you soon. Tell me if you like me doing film reviews. This isn't a thing I normally do. Have you seen the movie? What are your thoughts on it? Which female superheroes would you like to see get their own movie? Bye! Don't know anything, but you talk endlessly. Don't know what it means.